I was out walking the other day, and I was listening to music. I usually listen to music when I'm when I'm walking, but in my in my playing of my on my phone, it just goes through my whole seven thousand songs or whatever, and 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 it'll come up. It'll pop a sermon up. It'll pop if it's a sermon it's in the rotation. It hit, and so I was walking along, and I heard this uh, message that I preached years ago in in Matamora uh, about the storms of life. And um, and I was teaching on Jonah, and in the in the message that pop, popped up, Jonah talked about Jonah being thrown overboard because they had finally decided he's the reason why they're going through the storm. And they tossed him off the boat. Well, God scooped him up in this great big fish. And I'm talking, the sermon's going on. Going, he got scooped him up in this great big fish. I thought, well, I, that's not a bad, that's doesn't sound like a very good deal. I don't care how it was a whale or a big fish or whatever, because you know what's inside of them? There's nothing to eat. There's just seaweed and small fish. But I think that's where sushi started. So I heard that. I told you that to, just to lead into what I, I'm, I'm listening. Because see, a lot of times we just need to hear our own voice. I used to listen to my messages about every week. And Rob gave me a hard time about it. I said, why do you listen to your message? Well, I need to, I want to improve. I want to get better at what I do. And, uh, but I quit listening to him. And, I, I, and it just popped up, so I, I stopped my, my, my phone and, and uh, uh, picked up and found that whole sermon and listened to the whole sermon. And I thought, well, that really wasn't too bad, you know. That guy could preach sometimes, you know. But, uh, I, you know, when we, when we get into struggles, and I wasn't in a struggle at all, but yet there was times when we get into struggles, the voice we need to hear the most is our own, speaking faith. Speaking to our own lives because we know ourselves the best. The only one who knows this better is God. And because we'll lie to ourselves sometimes. And the, when we were in uh, Florida a couple of weeks ago, was it two weeks ago now? We were in Florida and Debbie had her vacation wish, dream wish. We did nothing but sit by the pool or go to the beach. That was all we did. And I didn't get to do any exploring. I wasn't, I'm not complaining because I, I said, we're going to do this. And I think it was Friday, she promised me to go exploring. Well, we left Florida. We explored our way back home. But, um, you know, the thing is, is that I sat there at the beach. We're sitting at the pool. I mean, I didn't go down. I think I went down to the beach twice. But the, one of the pools just overlooked the beach. It was just really peaceful. The, you know, the breeze, the whole thing. It was just a, a really peaceful time. And I sat there and I read. I listened to to some, some music as I was reading, and, I was, and, I was, and the Lord spoke to me about a series that I think is, is needed today, if not just, to, but we're gonna start it today, and it's on peace. We live in a world of turmoil, and I've been saying we're at war, okay, we're at war, but what, what's the purpose of war? To get to peace, uh, to find a way to get to peace. And um, I was, my, my favorite journal, I, didn't know where, I think I know where I got this now, but, um, I gotta get another one. Isn't it look cool? It's, it's like, like cloth paper, even. It's really sort of thick. It's, if you journal, it's a favorite type of thing to have, you know. So if you find one, get it. I'll buy it from you. Anyway, but a, on the front of it says this May today there be peace within. And I have another journal just like this one that says the exact same thing. And the reason why I think I know where I got this. And I says, May you trust that you are exactly where you're meant to be. You know, when, you, when, you, uh, when, you, when you're right where you're supposed to be, doing exactly where you're supposed to be, there is a calm in you, isn't there? There's a, a peace uh, that resonates. You just relax into what you're doing. He goes on to say this, you are, you're not, you, may you not forget the infinite, infinite possibilities that are born of faith in you and others. We have to remind ourselves that God's promised us. He's promised us. He's made covenant with us peace. He's made a promise to us. Jesus made a promise. says, I'm not going to give you the peace that the world gives. Because that's fleeting. That's just one day here, gone the next. Jesus says, I'm going to give you my peace. And if you think about his peace, you realize that his peace was so sustainable, it took him through the cross. You know... Um, I was thinking about this when we were worshiping because I, my show, I've done what I've done on my shoulder. I'm not going to the doctor. I'm just decided I'm not because I wanted to op operate. I'm 70, never had been cut on in my life, and I'm not planning on it. 
I say about Jesus, because I, if I get my arm up too high, I can start to wince a little bit, you know, and, and if, I, if I lay on it wrong, and I'm right-handed. So a lot of times I like to lay on my right side, and Debbie's over to my right side, and after all, I can't because of my, anyway, that's a whole other issue. Um, but Jesus, when he's on the cross, he was stretched out. And he was stretched out, his arms were having more like this, and his body was scrunched like this. And he was being held up by, his, his weight was pulling his arms down. And I thought about that as I was worshiping because I raised up my hands and I thought, well, really it's starting to hurt. And I, th- and, and I was reminded that Jesus went through a whole lot of pain, but what took him through the pain was the peace that he transferred to us. He went through all that because the peace that God, that he said gave, he gave to us, God had put in him to take him through that time. So whenever, whenever you're in pain, whenever things are not going right, whenever things are not looking right, you've got to remind yourself that Jesus promised you a peace that's unmatchable by any other thing. You know, most of us yearn for, uh, and more than anything else, is inner peace, to not be in turmoil in ourselves, right? I've worked enough in the, in the mental health field to realize there's a lot of people out there in turmoil, and it's all in here. And when you try to speak to them the peace of God, which I try to do all the time, uh, is that is they don't understand it. They're not grasping it. Why? Because the turmoil keeps kicking it back up. That isn't for you. You can't do that. You can't get through this. You're depressed. You're, you have anxiety. You have stress. You have, Beloved, we live in a world full of stress and anxiety and depression. We live in it. Walk in it. Work in it every day. But the thing is, is that God's promised us a peace. There are three types of peace. Billy Graham said there's three types of peace. The first one of us, there's a spiritual peace, peace between man and God. It's there. We have, if we allow him into our lives, there's a peace he gives us. We know that his promises are always true. They're always faithful. They never fail. The second one is, is there's a psychological peace, a peace within. And, 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 the, and like I said, there's so many out there that can't grab that. They, they just can't seem to get a hold of it. And the third one is there's a, a uh, relational peace, a peace among mankind. Now, we see that normally in church. It's pretty easy for us to be in peace with one another because we're all believers. We all love one another. We're here for each other. But that's not always true. I've been in enough churches in my walk with God, and maybe you have too, where there's not peace. There's one fraction over here and one fraction over there. This fraction didn't like the fact that this got this new carpet, and this one liked the carpet. This one didn't like the fact the walls painted black, and some did. Pastor Jack did it to us. When we moved into this building, he spoke all the negative what could happen. It did, so I'm going to blame him. But it's like, you know, everybody has an idea of what church should look like. Everybody thinks they know what they want to happen. Well, that creates a friction within a place that's supposed to be very peaceful. There should be peace among mankind, especially among believers. The Bible has a vast amount of references to peace. Actually, a total of 570 places of the, not necessarily the word peace, but the insinuation of peace. The word peace actually is spoke 365 times in the Bible. And, and, and shalom was the word in the Old Testament that was used for the word peace. The most free, like I said, most frequently used was shalom, and it appears 278 times. Peace is one of the key cornerstones of what God wants us to grasp. You know, when, you're, when there's peace in your home, it's a whole lot easier being at home. You know, um, Deb and I have had some times in our life where peace wasn't resident. But it's her fault. I, I was never wrong. The thing is, 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 is that when, it, when peace is there, everything works the way it should. Shal- the word shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. That's what peace is. It's a place for you to be at knowing that there's, there's no problems existing anymore. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor Bob. Understand, I have problems. Everybody's got problems. But do you let them weigh you down? Or do you let God carry them with you? I hear people all the time talking about, well, I have this issue, and I took it to God. Yeah, but you picked it back up and went back out the door with it yourself. You know? I learned a long time ago under Pastor Callahan, he talked about the altar. We don't do, we have an altar now. We haven't had one in years, but we have one. We used to go to the altar every Sunday after, at the end of the service. We'd go to the altar every Sunday. 
pastor would be at the altar, everybody would be at the altar. And the thing is, is that we have to realize that that one song we sing, Overcomer, speaks a lot about what I'm just saying or what I'm going to say. No matter what, what, where you're at, no matter what you're going through, there's peace of God resident for you. No matter where you're going. No matter where, what it looks like that's going on around you. I don't care if you're having struggles in your family. I don't care if you're struggles in your work. That wherever you're, God's right there. He's offering you an opportunity to give restful peace through the struggle. We've got a squeak up here now. It's just saying you got fat, Bob. Anyway, um, turn me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And, and in this passage is one I've said it a lot of times, and I'll say it again, that um, this, is, this has become my theme, my desire, my, my purpose to, to live, purpose to, to, to walk by. Romans chapter 12, verse 18, the King James, New King James says this, if it is possible... Well, guess what? It's always possible. It's your choice. If, he, if, if, if Paul's writing says, if it's possible, he says, as much as it depends on Dina, as much as it depends on Aaron, as much as it depends on Sally, as much as it depends on Karen, as much as it depends on as much as it depends on you, we're to live peacefully with everybody. That's our that's that should be our our, our, our desire. Now, there's a lot of people out there that will take you to the level and not be able to live at peace with them. That's your choice. There's a, there's a lot of people in my life that I have met over the years that I know today that cause me to struggle with my walk with peace. But God's promised it to me. Jesus says it's yours. I'm leaving it for you, Bob, so you can use it. You can operate in it. He says as much as it depends on Bob, Live peace with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to... You see, when I first picked this passage out years ago, I'm going to get to the point, I'll tell you, and you'll know exactly the reason why I liked it. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For as written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him to drink. In doing so, it's like heaping coals of fire upon their head. I liked that line. Man, I'm going to burn them up because they've been mean to me. Don't y'all laugh at me. Y'all thought the same thing when you read it. Yes, I got a place. All I got to do is be nice for a little bit and they'll burn the fire. That's right. That'll teach them. Mess with me. Thank you, Sally. You think just like I did. <laughs> it says, but it says don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. How does that happen? It's when we walk in peace, all of a sudden, all the struggles, it's not like they're not there, but you don't feel the intensity of them anymore. I, can, I know when the struggles hit us, I know when it's financial struggles, and we have this problem or that problem. That's things that are, I have stress, but I don't allow it to set in anymore. Now listen to this in the message, that same verse. We're going to start in verse 17. It says this, don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. How are we supposed to see people? Through the eyes of Jesus, right? We have to look at people. Even when we don't like that person, we have to see them as Jesus sees them. Even though we know that they're a dirty, rotten scoundrel. Are there any other words I could use? But anyway, you know what I'm saying. They're the evil of evilest. They're the evilest of evil. But we're supposed to see them as Jesus because he doesn't see them like that. He sees the potential that was birthed in them the day they drove their first breath out of their mother's womb. He knew the potential they had. We watched a, uh, a movie the other night. We actually ran across a couple of really good ones. And um, the one um, was called uh, Plane. It had uh, Gerard Butler and his Debbie's favorite actor. Other than Sly Stallone, what's that guy that they call him Aquaman? What's his name? He's ugly as dirt. But what is his name? Jason Momoa. Yeah, she likes him because when I take my shirt off, I look just like him. <laughs> well, if you look at it right, I do. <laughs> 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 he said, "But 
It was like they, were, they, they had to land this plane because of a storm and wiped out their, their uh, electronics. So they had to land this plane, landed on an island that was actually uh, take, uh, had been taken over by thieves and, and murderers and things like that. And um, they had to get out of there. They had to find a way out of there. Well, what was interesting was I don't, I don't really think the one guy that was with him was a criminal. <laughs> he was, when they had put him on the plane, he had him handcuffed, he's going to prison or whatever. He was the calmest guy with him. He kept Gerard Butler, the wimp, you know, uh, calm. But that wimp was for Debbie. But anyway, the thing, the thing is, is that there was a peace that settled because those two just went about what they knew they had to do. You know, when you know what you're doing, when you're doing what you know you have to do, there's a peace that falls on you. There's something that changes the dynamics of the atmosphere for you. Um, he says, he goes on to say this, discover the beauty in everything. If, if I've got any, if you've got it in you, again, if you, if you can do it, get along with everybody. It's a matter of choice. It's a matter of saying, I can do this. I can take on anything because I know God's with me. Forget the movie. God's with me. Whenever I do anything, wherever I go, wherever, wherever step I take, God's with me. One of my favorite prayers that I pray pretty consistently is, Father, tomorrow take me where you've been today. Because he's out ahead of us. He has is, he is, uh, taught a message years ago about how he worked upstream in our lives. He worked upstream in Israel's life, and he continues to work upstream in our lives. We have to look at it like that. So, so, so what, is, what does peace mean to us? What does it mean? Well, here's what the scripture says. You will keep him in perfect peace. In other words, that Isaiah 26, 3 says this, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Our purpose is to keep our minds stayed on the things of God. When, when struggles come, we can't go, oh God, what's going on? We have to say, thank you, Father, for taking me through this problem. Oh, that's easy to say from the pulpit, Pastor Bob. No, that's what we have to do. It says, I will, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. When we trust in the Father, we are in a place that nothing can bother us. Uh, and and I, 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 it seems like I pick, him on, pick on him all the time. But there's a man of peace right there. I won't name his name, so it's not embarrassing. <laughs> Well, he, the, the, the deal is, is if you have watched him over the past four or five years, there's been a steady peace. God's in control. I don't lose. That's what he said. I don't lose. And we have to get into that point where we trust God no matter where we're at. I can remember being in Alabama in the hospital. I don't remember much about God, but I remember Alabama. And as I'm laying there, and I think I was the most peaceful person in the room. I mean, they pulled me out of the cardiac cath, and I'm laying there, well, I must be good. They didn't operate on me. I still got my chest hasn't been cut open. I'm good. And then she tells me, well, we need to cut you open. We can't do it because your ejection fraction is too low. I didn't, I, I'm hearing all the words, and they're going right through my head. I'm not listening. I'm not going to hear because I'm not going to allow them to take away from what God promised me. And that was peace in every situation, every physical situation, every emotional situation, every, 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 every soulful area of my life. I'm not going to let them take that away. But that's that guy right there. And I heard these words. That's not what I believe from him. I heard those words. Peace, it says in, in John chapter 14, verse 27, this is Jesus' covenant to us. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Let your heart not be what? Troubled. Neither let it be afraid. We have to stay in a place in our walk with God that, that we know that he's there no matter what. We have, that keeps us at peace. That keeps us in a place we need to be. Uh, James chapter 3, verse 17 says this, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first and pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. There is a peace that comes from heaven that resides on us. Verse 18, go ahead. It says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Peace also, peace also means 
in the physiological sense, in the medical sense, when you have anxiety, you don't think straight. When you have anxiety, when you're stressed, your ability to comprehend situations is, is um, affected by the stress. That's why you hear people say, well, I was stressed and I made this terrible decision because I was so stressed. In the natural, in our physiological bodies, stress, you know, stress affects the way we respond to situations. Don't you think that's exactly what the enemy wants? He wants us to get stressed out and make a stupid decision because we're, we're stressed and we just feel like you've got to do something. Whenever you get that feeling, I've got to do something right now, you better take pause. You better say a prayer and ask for guidance because generally the enemy is the one pushing you like that. You know? So you better take pause and think about what the Lord is saying to you because peace, on the opposite of that, anxiety and all those things, peace helps you to just sit back and look at everything objectively. When you're operating in peace, you don't have to be all stressed about it. You can sit down, when you're operating in peace, you can sit down and look at a situation and it will look totally different than it was five minutes ago when you were stressed out. over those issues when we allow the peace of God to rest in us. Right. Uh, and, and I see it all. We had a young lady that uh, came to our church. I actually was doing counseling with her when I worked at uh, Taswood in Eureka. And she started coming to the church of Metamora. Uh, she had been on depression, anxiety pills, bi diagnosed bipolar at 16 years old. And we started, I started meeting with her, started sharing the word of God with her. She, was, she believed in the things of God. She started coming to our church in Metamora. And within, within it's like in a year, she got rid of all the pills, got rid of all of them. Because those things don't heal you. The pills can't heal you. Your body attracts, your body, your body needs it to, because those pills are taking a spot that God's already placed the healing in you to take care of. He's already given us the ability to be healed naturally. But we're not against. We're not against doctors. We're, we're not, not against, against pills. pills. Because there's a, there's a way that we do things. You know, while we're going through the situation, we should take advantage of every single thing available to us to get through that. As we're believing for our healing. Because those things are not going to bring our healing. Only the power of God will bring our healing. So we can, but we use, you know, the, the medical, the natural stuff until we get until we get stronger in our faith even sometimes. You know, when, we've been, when you've been buffeted by something for a long time, sometimes your faith does get weak, and you need your faith strengthened. And, and as you're at that point, you need some outside help. I'm not talking bad about medicine no. whatsoever. No, Please understand of course that. not. But when you see those type of things like you, like her, like others I've seen, when, when all of a sudden the healing power of God resonates in you, and you're able to step away from those things, that's great. Yes. That's important because... That's what God intends. That's what he intends, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, uh, in <coughs> 2 Thessalonians, Paul reminds us of the covenant Jesus made with us on peace. He says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, and in every way the Lord be with you all. You know, Paul used to write all of his, he'd either open or close with the word grace in his, in his epistles. And because he understood the grace of God that he had been walking in, that he had been called into. He had, he had, been, he had been a persecutor of Christians. God took him out of that and placed him in, a, in, a, in a, a leadership role within the body of Christ. And the thing is, is that Paul understood that. So grace and peace were important to him. He, he, he talked about it a lot. God's peace means he is going to take care of the situation. He's already taking care of the situation. 
if we follow his word, we follow what he's doing. True peace is based on doing the, God's will. According to Psalm 119, 165, there's such a great peace and well-being that comes to the lovers of your word that they will never be offended. People, when we love the word, when we have the word resonance, you know, I, I talk to people all the time, and, and the word of God just rolls out of them. And they'll quote you chapter and verse. And I, I've not been able to do that with a lot of things. And I'm, I, I think I probably put myself into that because I kept saying I can't do that. But the word of God is going to roll out of you. It doesn't have to be chapter and verse. You don't have to quote it verbatim. You quote it what God has put in your heart. You quote it out like you speak. Mary speaks it like Mary. When it comes out of, when it comes out of Aaron, it's Aaron's words that are coming out, but it's God in the middle of it all. And that's the type of place we want to be. It's God's word working through us and in us that allows the peace of God to, be, to reside over us. True lasting peace is based on obedience to God's will because ultimately true happiness comes from living according to his way. Just think about where you've been. You know, I, I like to look back over my life. And people say, we shouldn't look backwards. Well, I am made up of every part of my history. Some people don't believe that. But whatever your history is, that's a part of who you are. Now, you're walking clean. I don't, if, you're, if you're a, like if you're Pastor Rick and into drugs like he was. Did I say that out loud? Anyway. <laughs> he was a pothead. Oh, I'm sorry. He, yeah, it's legal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are people that are saved. Say, oh, it's legal now. I can do it. That doesn't mean anything. But anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> we had never thought about it, side, but now I've got questions. <laughs> but, but I mean, and I don't even know where I was going with all that. It's, it's, it really, I don't know why I was, why I was even bringing up Pastor Rick. I guess it's a pick on him. I don't know. But the thing is, the thing is, is that where, oh, where we came from, that's a part of us. It's not a dominant part of us anymore. The dominant part of us is the things of God. But I understand that I, as I look back over my life, I, I realize that those bits and pieces that there's victory over them, and, and, and yet they're still, they're still who Bob Martin is made up of. I have walked in the victory. I walk in the power. But I also remember the shortcomings that I lived, had to walk through to get where I'm at today. So it's not a struggle because the peace of God is in me. Now, when I make a mistake today, I don't look back and say, well, that's that same mistake I made 20 years ago because that's all been healed. But I walk forward and I keep moving forward with peace of God in me. What does the Bible say about peace? The Bible tells us that real peace, real, true, lasting, profound peace must come from within each person individually first through the faith of Jesus Christ that walks in, that's in us. As we live the walk, if we walk the walk, if we live the walk, his power, his peace, his love, his grace, his mercy continues to build in us, continues to make life better than it was the day before. So here's another question. What does, what does he, what keeps his, keeps his, mean to keep us in perfect peace? He says he will keep us in perfect peace means that he gives his followers and inner strength and assurance by protecting them from anxiety caused by life's troubles. I, I really don't get stressed out about anything. I've got a witness. Nothing stresses me anymore. Unless she's mad at me, then I get stressed. <laughs> so how, how do you fix that? Don't get her mad at me. Here's what Romans, Romans says in chapter, chapter 15, 15 out of the... Uh, uh, Passion Translation. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. Hear that last part. Perfect peace as we trust in Him. We have to keep our eyes on Him. We have to keep focused in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continue to surround your life with His super abundance until you radiate with hope. And that's, that's something you radiate with hope. In other words, when people see you, they see a different person. They see someone they want to be like, they want to live like. You know, a lot of Christians over the years, I mean, 
don't know what to do. They never smile. I mean, I got nothing. I want to smile. I love, I love my life now. But they never smiled. They, they would have been upset the fact that we joke around in church service sometimes. I don't do it. You do it. Oh, yeah. We went to, we've gone out to eat. Probably told you this story before I'm telling you it's perfect. We'd gone out to a Chinese restaurant in Washington after church one day. There was about eight of us. And we had one young lady who was with us, Trish, uh, Rev, well, Trish, Trish Hooker is her last name now. She became a hooker after she got married. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Anyway, anyway. But, uh, but anyway, we were sitting there, and we are just laughing. We're having a good, we're, we're having, we just got a church. We've been enjoying ourselves. And, and Rick's mom, now you had to know, you, you really, really had to know, know her, okay? okay? And, and she's, 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 she's talking, well, my boys, boys and I said, wait a minute, we know your boys? Don't tell us about your boys, you know? But her, her, her name never did anything wrong. She's like, give me, I can write, write three books on your boys. <laughs> but we're laughing, and we're having a good time, and everybody else is sort of going off. And I went up to pay, and this table here was a couple, this guy and a, and a lady, and I went to pay. Huh? Prune face. And, 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 and his words were, be still and know that I am God. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> it took everything in me not to laugh. And I walked, I said, you know, you guys need to be still and know that I am God. But it's like, it was like, that's, that's what he, that was his attitude towards the walk of God. Man, I, God gives us joy for a reason. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what comes out of walking in his peace. No matter what you're doing. And then it goes on in John and the Amplified in John 14, 27. says, this peace I leave with you, my peace, my own peace, I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Uh, <coughs> Amplified just sort, sort of tells it all, doesn't it? So, so our, our goal, goal, right, is to, is to do what we need to do to keep our peace. True, True peace is just allowing the things of God to be resonant in us at a, le at a level that we can't help but be, feel calm and collected, as it were, in everything we do. Can, can we have, have peace of God? God? Yeah, we can have it. it. You have it. Can, can we have it? You already have it. Now you, you got to grow, grow it, just, just like everything else, else in the kingdom. kingdom. You, you got to work, work it. it. You got to work, work it. How do you work it? You do it as you as you move forward in, in, in everything you do in life. You know, it's, it's, it's like, like working our faith. What does working our faith mean? mean? It means that we are believing faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. That doesn't take us out of faith because we haven't seen it yet, does it? I still have faith for that Corvette. One day I'll have it. Why? It's a desire in my heart. Do I need it? No. But I claim the same victory that all the others that didn't need something. And yet God says, here it is. But I'll take the things that I need along. Like, do I need to have this or that? Yeah. And I trust. I let my faith work in everything. Well, that's what we do with peace. We put our peace to work. So, so what does it mean to have peace about that or this or that? I have peace about this or that meaning means an understanding of acceptance to of certain situations without agitation or worry. Okay. Before I take my last verse to share with you that spoke over every household in Israel has been from ever, forever. The thing is, is you have to make a choice to leave here today. And stay in peace. Stay in joy. You have to make a choice whenever you leave the, 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 the brethren. You have to make a choice to stand on your own and realize you're not by yourself. That the Lord's right there with you. That he's going to take you to levels of everything that he's given us. <clears throat> and you take you to a new level every day in it. He's going to walk you into faith at a new level than you've ever had before. He's, He's going to walk you into peace. And He's, He's going to walk you into grace like you've never been in before. Why? Because we restrict ourselves from, from actually receiving everything at its fullest measure. We grow in it, right? 
think about um, we'll, we'll pick, pick on Aaron's, Aaron's kids instead of my grandkids. Because we've seen them all grow up in this church. How old were you guys? How old was uh, Kaylee when you guys started coming? Yeah. And she's 14? 13. Isn't that amazing? We watched her from a baby being held in their arms to up here, a young lady. You know, he's going to have to put locks on his doors and everything else. And, and the thing is, is that, but then you look at Cambria, how fast she's growing up. But as they've grown, if I watch, as you watch Kaylee from the youngest part up to where she's at now, she's seeking the things of God. Now, she's, she has to deal with the world in which she lives. That's, that's a different world as a teenager today. But you see her, what? What she's getting in her heart are the things of God. That she's causing it to rise up strong. You watch her worship. You watch her up here. You watch, and here, then we'll do, we'll do, uh, what's her name? The, huh? Elise. I love watching her. You ever watch her worship? She gets up here and just, she's into worship. But as she grows, as she matures, she's going to go to new levels in it, just like Kaylee has. Well, that's what I'm talking about with our faith. We start off at a place, we, we're given that, that measure of faith, that, that this size of a mustard seed, but this to grow it. The mustard seed is, a, is the strongest and tallest plant in, in, in the garden. And, he, and, and that's what he wants for us. He wants to keep his movement. So in Israel, this is what they were told to do. Numbers, Numbers chapter 6. It's called the priestly blessing. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Now, when he's saying children, he's not talking about little kids. He's talking about all of them. He's talking about all of us. And he goes on to say this, And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Used to be a social pastor at a church where my did the closing every Sunday. And the pastor had taught on this section. And so we put it on the pulpit, uh, typed out, because that was the last thing we said before we left every Sunday over the people of the congregation. Well, the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord wants to put, do those things for us. I'm not sure what they're beating back there, but we're about done here. I want you to walk in peace this week. I want you to pursue it like you've never pursued it before. You know... The, and, the and the way you, you do that, that the most is no matter what comes at you. You get up tomorrow morning, we'll, we'll give you a day. We'll, we'll give you a day off today. <laughs> so, so walk in all your anxiety, walk in all your stress, stress walk in all the, all the, all the stuff, stuff you woke up with this morning, just live in it. And then Sally said, you can't stay here no more. The thing is, is I want you to get up tomorrow morning, and when your feet hit the floor out of bed, I want, I want you to, you to say to yourself, yourself this, this is going to be the most peaceful day of my existence. And then, and then when you get the next one, this is going to be the most peaceful day of my existence. Every, every day. Watch, watch what, what God, God will do when you speak, speak that over yourself. yourself. Like, like I said, I listened to myself on that one sermon. I thought, you know, that wasn't too bad a sermon. So I listened to the whole thing. That one part caught my ear. But beloved, when you start speaking peace over your life and you declare it over your life, Trust me on this. It will be resident in your life. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that this is the last day of anxiety, stress, uh, uh, struggles, distress, depression. This is the last day of any of it here within the walls of this place or within, outside the walls with this, your children. I thank you, Father, that from this day forward, 
They are pursuing peace and they walk in peace at a level they never expect. Each day growing and each day multiplying it over the day before. And they're going to see great things happen as your mercy, your grace, and your, and your, and your peace becomes resident every day in their lives. Nothing more, nothing more will ever stress them out or give them anxiety or give them frustration. It's gone. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father